Hello, guys, and God bless. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, so this is obviously part three. There will be a part four. Um, I want to take a minute and just review a few things, kind of for my sake and uh, hopefully for yours too. <clears throat> Sometimes I feel like getting a little hurry. I don't want to make videos too long, but at the same time, I feel the Lord telling me not to worry about that, just to continue uh, doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to just do a quick review. Obviously, this is topic on fruit. Uh, it, it goes very in depth. It's been very difficult for me in a lot of ways uh, to kind of put this together. Uh, it's been a rough week. Um, so I did a series of videos before that kind of lead up to this. Uh, this being the culminating uh, video series for this video group here. I talked to you a little bit about my history. I was an Army Ranger and, and I also worked at the Army Ranger School as an instructor, uh, putting out a product. And I compared Ranger School a little bit with uh, Fruit because we were producing a elite warrior to fight in the Army. So the Army, I compared to God uh, in kind of a you know parable type format, I guess. Uh, not taking anything from what the Word of God says, but just as he explained it to me in my mind with the Holy Spirit is army is compared to God. They give up their soldiers. They give up their, their uh, members that have done well. Uh, they are sent to ranger school to be tested and tried and put through the paces. And while that's going on, they learn and grow and, and develop fruit, which means leadership, uh, uh, knowledge and wisdom on fighting in different types of terrain and different types of ways. Uh, different types of special unit patrols. Uh, so then they go back to their big army, they go back to God, and this fruit is then offered up to, to God, which is essentially the big army, to help the rest of everybody else. So in a snapshot, that was uh, Ranger School. Uh, again, there's uh, the army giving up its better soldiers, giving up their uh, the ones that have kind of distinguish themselves in their units to come here to the ranger school to be elevated to an even better level all right and thus helping their peers helping their brothers uh with different tasks and everything else that goes along with ranger school uh, a first fruits type scenario would be those that graduate completely uh, unhindered uh, at the top of their class uh, with their class because you can be recycled you can be kind of like held back in school like if you don't pass third grade you be you can be held back to repeat that cycle so in a snapshot that's what that was talking about um continuing to fast forward here we went through all the strong coordinates of fruit both in the hebrew and the greek and i cherry picked different things that highlighted in these uh definitions essentially reward, offspring, progeny, uh, fruit of your actions. We are obviously the branches incorporated with the vine of Jesus Christ because without him we can do nothing and we produce fruit. And God has even told his disciples, when I say God, Jesus Christ has told his disciples that I have chosen you to bear much fruit. All right, And that's what we're here for, to bear this fruit and to um, uh, let it manifest through our lives um, from him to show the world. And again, these just all go through uh, the different fruits, both Hebrew and Greek. We talked a little bit about first fruits. We're going to get into that in the next video. And we're going to kind of close this up with conception and, and being pressed to produce oil. And we'll get into that here in just a second. Again, all the Greek. I showed you a prophetic word that was given. Um, guys, I collect prophetic words, okay? And I have seen several like this, okay? This is the one I chose for this, uh, and it's the one I choose a lot because uh, it kind of encompasses everybody. Uh, and I chose this one because of how well it struck my soul and my spirit when I read it. It just hit me so hard that this is what happened. You know, and there's other words that I have and that I've read that unbeknownst to this author here, Jeff Byerly, uh, that actually 
confirm what this is saying in different ways. So I, I read this prophetic word to you in the last video, or one of the videos, and um, it comes out basically saying that we were in heaven before. We've come through this, through the womb, through the waters of ambient, which is uh, forgetting, forgetfulness. We uh, talked about the cup of forgetfulness. We talked about the land of forgetfulness. And here we are. And we're trying to be, this is all a restoration project uh, planned from God. This whole thing is. And how we eagerly await to um, for the revealing of the sons of God, which are us, which is the man-child, which we will talk about today and in the next video. The archangels, we talked about the, uh, the different people here on earth, the lost, the backslidden, uh, the, uh, the bride of Christ, and keep scrolling through here. You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you to bring forth fruit. That's what we're here for. And we talked, if you want to really learn about the man-child, read Hebrews 5, 6, and I believe 7. And that gives a great picture of exactly what they go through. And it talks about the infirmaries. It talks about the, 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 uh, the heartache, the pain, the bitterness. It also talks about the work and the labor of love. That's exactly what producing fruit is, the labor of love. For our brothers and sisters, we want them to wake up. We want them to know what we know. We want them to have understanding. We want to help them have understanding with what the Word of God is completely about and have understanding why they are here and who's Jesus and who they are. And uh, it's, it's revealing the whole truth is the labor of love. Okay, guys, let's get started. I'm going to go into pause. We'll keep going here. Real briefly, right here, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. We're going to talk about this word happy here in a little while, probably in the next video. For in much wisdom is much grief, increasing in knowledge increases in sorrow. And that is definitely true. So here we go, guys. Let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, so people like to speak of love. Our society has been so deranged and spun out of control that many have uh, don't have any idea what truly love is. Satan has done a great do great job devastating, uh, fooling people of what love is, and he's also making it equivalent to tolerance. I've heard that many Christians are now embracing this newfound teaching that all you need is love, 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 love. That's because God loves unconditionally and is accepting of you no matter what. Okay, if this was the case, we would all still be in heaven right now. We would all be without consequence. We would all be living freely in heaven without any type of retribution being here. Free love without consequence, attitude from God. Right now, we're under grace, which is in short, it's a paid debt. Uh, we're under grace because of what Jesus Christ did for our sins on the cross. And right now, there's this balance. Um, everything with God is measurement. He measures our hearts. He measures the temple. Uh, he measured the ark, all these things, the, 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 uh, the ark inside the, uh, the temple, also Noah's ark. I mean, everything is equivalent to being measured. And when Jesus died on our sin, died for our sins, paid for our sins, all of mankind, it's a done deal. We're under this grace, which is going to end very shortly because the, in my opinion, and I'll state it as my opinion, I don't know if there's a verse that backs this up, but my opinion is, is because once everything is has been paid for, there's there's becoming a point of where it's overflowing, and I, I know the Lord through has talked about this cup of this cup of uh, filth overflowing in America, and that's exactly what's happening. Is is people are using grace as an extension to live a sinful lifestyle. They're using it as an extension of um, not having to deal with God's anger and all these different things. So although yes, love is without consequence you can go to God right now no matter what sins you've done plead with him uh, repentance plead with him in repentance and come back to him that's where we're at right now but that is going to end and then will come what is called the law all right well, I'm probably not going to get into that here but just like in Daniel where the balance of uh, you know they were busy partying they were celebrating they were drinking out of the vessels they were um, essentially just living living it up. Uh, God had wrote on the wall, your time is up and you are found wanting. And that's the case of where we're at right now. 
Love is a mutual verb between two people. You show love and they show love. It's not a um, one-sided uh, extension. It's a two-sided verbal participation. In Matthew 25, because this leads right into Matthew 25, if this was the case of love being just a one-sided, going to come and get you and take you all, um, it's not showing the uh, the five unwise were not showing God the, the relationship. They were not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. It was all a one-sided thing, as they thought. And this is where you get the phrase, I know you not. When the door shuts and the unwise go looking for oil for their lamps, they want to know what's going on. They're going to be walking in the darkness and they're not going to know what to do. So what does love have to do with wisdom and fruit? Moreover, why do the wise leave and the unwise stay? It's my opinion that there was no relationship present there. It was a one-sided relationship. Jesus Christ extending his arm, extending his hand out of love to take them. However, it was not reciprocated back to him. There was no relationship. There was no consummation. There's no uh, conception. There's no there's no uh, fruit that was being bred, being born. There was nothing that was um, attributed to the fact that they wanted anything to do with him except for the fact that they believed. Uh, a bride would rather, okay, would a groom come for a bride that is not intimate with him? Or would a groom come for a bride that wants to know him, wants to be intimate with him, wants to know everything about him, wants to know what's going on in the world, wants to know the whole truth, which Jesus Christ is, the way, the truth, and the life. When love, cons when love consummates and conceives, it raises up and eventually brings forth a child, which is fruit. A true marriage founded on God will produce fruit. Just like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, patience, kindness, not rude, not self-seeking. The fruit that distinguish you, distinguishes your marriage from other marriages. So a true marriage will produce good fruit. All these different things. There will not be... Uh, adultery. There will not be, um, you know, uh, selfless acts. Uh, you'll you'll place the betterment of the marriage uh, first and foremost, which of course leads to consummation, conception, and children. Because when you have all these things, then you're intimate with each other. Now, I believe the Lord showed us something very special on the 28th of November, 2013. This was a time that, in my opinion, uh, started a great release of heavenly wisdom. Yes, there was heavenly wisdom. Proverbs 120 is a, um, a good verse to look at that cries out for people to listen. Wisdom must be sought after and pursued. Okay, It's not just going to happen for you. You have to be a diligent student. You have to want to know. Um, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the duty of kings uh, to reveal. Or It's a glory of God to conceal. Let me pull it up. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the duty of kings to search it out. That's what I'm trying to say. So wisdom must be sought after. It must take effort. You must be diligent. You must be um, willing to sacrifice and willing to put time and effort into learning who he is. It's not just going to be uh, a handout, essentially. So on the 20th of November, 2013, common I, son, I, son of God, hit the sun. It, is supposed to be, it was supposed to have made perihelion, which means kind of slingshot around the sun. The comet was huge. Uh, it was, was 186,400 miles long. Uh, do you know this number? Does this number sound familiar to you? This number, according to Cornell University, is the speed of light in miles per second. So the comet's length from the beginning to the end was 186,400 miles long, which is the speed of light in miles per second. This day was also Hanukkah and also Thanksgiving. All right, Hanukkah is the festival of light and Thanksgiving is the holiday of praise. Now, this number was also mentioned in Numbers 2.9 when all the tribe of Judah were numbered, 186,400 people. So Judah meaning praise or offering, light meaning wisdom or ability to see and hear. So when this conception occurs in the body, there is a pulse of light given off. All right? This is a sperm cell and an egg cell. 
when the sperm cell enters into the egg cell, a pulse of light will, and you can see videos on this on YouTube, a pulse of light will have occurred. We see the same thing occur on the 28th of November, 2013. However, this was in the heavenlies, the comet being the sperm cell hitting the sun, a female egg cell. So this immaculate conception and this light lead to the child or the fruit. So which leads me to my opinion of the conception of the child in Revelation 12. Uh, in fact, I asked the Lord directly, was there a conception for us to see in Revelation 12? Because we know we have a pregnant woman here. Was there heavenly conception? And I actually had to pull my car over because I was just asking him a prayer in my car. And he stated to me that I had studied this before. Uh, go back and look at Kamarai son. The fruit produced by this conception are the children of God, which are the children of light. And you can look in the Bible under children of light, and you can see many different verses that go back to that. And here's one of them. So you have this conception and this conception. Same thing. The children of light were being born or conceived on November 28th. Now, nine months later, I was looking for us to go home. <laughs> of course, that didn't happen. But anyway, the, the wisdom was birthed. The, the light, the children were conceived on that day. You are all children of light and the children of day. You are not of night nor of darkness, so let us watch and not sleep. So we are the ones that are awake and watching and sober and helping and as others do, but let us watch and be sober, for they that sleep in the night, that are drunken, let them be drunken in the night. But who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Faith, obedience, and love, I would add, or obedience, right? Which is faith. If you have faith, you're going to be obedient. So let's talk about the olive. Okay, I hope I don't make anybody hungry here with this Greek salad. But this was pretty neat what he showed me. So the olive is a small, bitter tasting fruit of the olive tree. The olive has a stone pit inside of it, and this stone pit is removed and, and is replaced with an orange pimento pepper. This gives the olive a bitter fruit, a sweeter taste. So you have these pits that are in here, and then this machine comes in, removes the pit, the heart of stone, if you will, and gives it a heart of flesh, which is the pimento, the sweet fruit, the sweet flesh. The flesh of a pimento is sweet and succulent, more Aramaic than the red bell pepper. And this verse came to mind again. A new heart I will also give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart, right here, out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, which is the pimento, the sweet flesh. And I will put my spirit with you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land, which is heaven. Which led me to this verse, and thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause their lamp to burn always. Again, this goes back to the Revelation 20 or uh, Matthew 25. You get two types of oil from the olive. The first, which is the purest and finest, and of course the most expensive, is the beaten oil. Actually, the word beaten is not the best rendering. The word is ketith, which means to break into pieces. The first oil to be extracted from the olive does not come from pressing the olives, but breaking or cutting and tearing them to pieces. Pure olive oil beaten for the light, always and continually, was beaten into a fine mortar, beaten, tried, tested, refined, which makes the oil to, to burn continually. This takes us to the word diligent, which we just talked about a little bit. So this word beaten means to crush, to break into pieces, to be destroyed, to beat down. These are the trials. These are the tests. These are the, the refinement that we're going through. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word from truth. 
labor, study, tried, tested, to show approved. That's, that's this word here, I'm sorry, proof right here. Dokimnos, and this word study for right here. To give diligence, to endeavor, to speak, study. Then you have the five foolish and the five wise. The five wise had oil, and the five foolish did not. They all had lamps, they were all looking for his return, but they did not have the oil in their lamp to burn bright. And this goes back to Daniel. 243, I believe, God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break into pieces and consume these kingdoms. And I think there's a couple different meanings here, but anyway, you can see the phrase here, break into pieces, which is the same thing of being crushed, being smited, being broken to pieces. You got to understand that what Jesus Christ did is the same thing that uh, the man-child will go through. It's the same path. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the dead in Christ in the next video. Some will see death as in a physical death, some won't. Um, however, it's it's not really about that. It's, a, it's about the, uh, um, it's about this, all, Christ being all you need. Uh, just like he says, you're the branches on the vine. Without me, you can do nothing. We, we have to realize that. We have to be humbled enough and tested and tried to show that we can't do anything on our own except through him. Olive trees or olives spring up from a tree and turn dark green. When they are ripe, they turn black inside. The olive are a couple drops. The first couple drops are called liquid gold. This is the beaten oil, the purest and the finest. I cannot help but see a picture in Jesus as this. Being the first fruit, he is the light of the world. Just as we talk about the light, the children of light. So he, we're going through the same process as he did in a different way. And obviously not as intense. I believe the use of the beaten oil was to symbolize the coming of the Messiah, Jesus, who would be the light and the shining of darkness, just like the sons of God will be. He will be pure as the oil made to be pure. The olive is afflicted in every way to extract the pure oil, but is not crushed because once it is crushed, the oil mixes with the impurities and is no longer pure. So it's not completely destroyed, okay? Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsem Gethsemane means oil press. The Garden of Gethsemane was located at the base of the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, just like so. It all goes back to the olives, goes back to the children of the light, goes back to the oil, goes back to the man child. It's all connected. Jerusalem being the bride, uh, the Mount of Olives. We're talking about the fruit, which is the fruit, which is the man child, which goes ascends up to the, uh, heaven in Revelation 12. This is where Jesus went under great agony for the undertaking that he had come for. We know Jesus had a few disciples that were with them, which were commanded of them to stay awake and pray. Just like we talked about the children of light, to stay awake. Uh, sorry, right here. Your children of light, let them, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. He told us to stay awake, the disciples. And they couldn't, they had a hard time if we remember right. Sorry, guys. Stay awake and pray. This location is the olive press. All right. This is um, this is likened to the Garden of Eden, where sin and thus the fall of man began, where the first um, where the first fruits were produced, where the uh, you had the seed of the enemy and the seed of the of the woman, uh, Cain and Abel, requesting that the will of the Father be done. And this is what it's all about. It's you know Jesus had a heart. Uh, well, he prayed. And ask the Father if it if it is possible, you know, not to let him drink from this cup, but his will, the Father's will, be done. And sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes it's very hard. Sometimes the trials are so great, and we're like, why are you allowing this to happen, Father? Please give me the strength. We don't, we don't want it to happen, but we accept that this is the, for the betterment of some other cause that the Father is doing this. And Jesus understood that his death will bring great fruit. In other words, it will shine this whole light onto the earth to show us um, that well, he'll give us his word. He'll give us all this fruit that came from his life, his trials, and his death. And then we have the, uh, when Jesus was being tested and he was in prayer, he sweat great drops of blood. I liken to this to the liquid gold that was discussed as the first oil that comes out of the olive when it's being pressed. 
This is the beginning of Jesus offering himself to the Father as fruit. Of course, his whole life was a sinless offering in the will of the Father, but I'm suggesting that this is where the suffering really took hold. And that's kind of what I'm saying here. As, as, as he was sweating these great drops of blood, this liquid gold uh, compared to the oil that was pressed out of the olive um, was the beginning of his, his suffering, his first um, encounter with being pressed, essentially. So when we go back to Cain and we look at the seed of the serpent, uh, remember our city. We talked about the city of Enoch uh, somewhat in the past videos. And remember how there was a comparison between where city and country were. In the city you have this sin. You have that's where sin begins. That's where it manifests. That's where it it uh, compounds. And in the city we also have Gath, which is where Goliath was from, which also goes back to Geth. All right, Geth means uh, uh, oil press, whereas Gath means wine press, which is also the wrath of God. Okay, so you have the oil press, which uh, the people of God go through, and then you're going to have the wine press, where the disobedient children of God will go through. So New York, along with other states, have just decreed that abortions up until birth are acceptable. When you look at this closely, um, we see that earthly things also try to, or do, uh, reflect spiritual things. And, and this is exactly what's happened in Revelation 12. You have the, an, the enemy, the Satan, standing before the woman to devour her child as soon as it's born. That's exactly what's manifesting in reality. Well, I won't say reality, reality, but what's manifesting here in the earth. As, as this child, as this fruit's growing in the womb, Satan wants to devour it before it's even born. And that's why you're having these up until birth uh, abortions. So enemy has been attacking the fruit of the womb since 1973. If you look at 73, look at Psalm 73 if you ever get a chance. It's about the afflicted. And that's exactly what's going on here. He's, he's trying to destroy the fruit before it manifests, uh, before it can be an offering up to Father. Uh, this also goes back, so there's so many facets to this, guys, I get a little confused. So you have um, the child being wanting to be devoured, which is also symbolic of the offering up to God, wanting to be devoured. And also the um, the manifestation of the sons of God being devoured. He wants to destroy all those works. Um, so on earth is what we're seeing abortions being manifested here. That's why. The, uh, the works, the labors of love that we talked about, uh, that we find in Hebrews, is like things like this video, or praises, or worship, or prayers and supplication for the lost and backslidden. Have you ever noticed like you can easily watch a movie till midnight that you enjoy, but it, if you want to pray at nine o'clock at night, you start yawning and falling asleep. It's because the enemy's attacking you. He doesn't want you to pray. He wants you sleepy. He wants you tired. And that's another example, a small example, but it's still a good example of the offerings up to God being devoured by the enemy. So it goes from everything from that to actually devouring um, the offerings up to God and the man child, which... I'm not sure how he's going to, you know, try to manifest that here. But anyway, um, but this is exactly what the enemy's doing. And he did it in the garden to Jesus. He, he actually tried to, um, you know, press him there. And that was the, the enemy pressing him to not go through with what he, what the will of the Father was. So he wants to devour it all. Videos, prayer, supplication, praise. My bigger point is this. We need to be... Um, uh, we have been led in and have diligently shared what we've been shown. This fruit will come to ripeness uh, once events occur. Uh, like, again, it's a birthing. So, for example, during 9-11, everybody went to church and started reading their Bible, searching for God. What's going on? Um, you know, why is this happening to America? Where did we go wrong? Uh, it's going to be the same thing that... Uh, with, I, I use this videos or whatever, for example. So when events occur, people are going to want answers. They're going to want to know. And that's going to be 
the birthing. So once that occurs, they're going to be searching for these things. And he wants to devour those things before they can get to the people to produce more fruit. Okay, so this goes into the next video a little bit. So here we have been chosen by the Son to bear much fruit, and that we should be his disciples to bear much fruit. He is the branch, we or he is the vine, we are the branches to bear fruit. And that includes, you know, that goes back to pruning, which is uncomfortable, all those different things. So let me read this. This is Proverbs 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words, hide my commandments within me. All right, so this is the having the laws of the Lord on your heart and incline thy ear to wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. If you cry after knowledge, lift up the voice for understanding. In other words, the, God wants you to desire to know the truth. He wants you to desire to come after wisdom and understanding. Seek for it as silver, search for it as hidden treasure. Then thou will understand and fear the Lord and find knowledge of God. And the Lord gives wisdoms out of his, gives with wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Okay, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy get, getting, get understanding. Exalt her, she shall promote thee. What does Jesus say? I am coming and my reward is with me. Okay, we're going to talk about that in the next video. Uh, she shall give unto thy hand an ornament of grace. This is a crown, a crown of glory she shall deliver. Promotion, um, my reward is with me. This all goes back to the man-child. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. God bless.